BA Blocks, the building blocks for your BA career. So we had a question come in uh, from one of our community members asking about the types of tools that a generalist BA should focus on learning. And as a generalist BA, uh, what I want to do is I want to talk you through uh, how I think about my own tools and what kind of tools I actually use in my day-to-day -day work uh, when I'm working for my clients. Uh, just a little bit of history on the types of requirements management tools that have existed and how you should actually think through uh, what kind of tools you should be learning. Uh, and so when I say, and when we talk about tools, this really has to do with the things that you use on a day-to-day -day basis to produce the artifacts of a business analyst. This doesn't include any uh, enterprise systems like SAP or Oracle knowledge, domain knowledge or systems knowledge. These are strictly just the tools that we have at our disposal to produce the deliverables that we're expected to produce. Those are the type of tools that we're talking about here. Now, historically, uh, in the late uh, 2000s, there was a huge push from a lot of software companies to try to build out requirements management tools. And many of those tools have, generally speaking, failed. So many employers who hire business analysts uh, have realized that a lot of the software tools that they used to buy, a lot of requirements management software tools that they used to buy, are either too restrictive or they are too cumbersome uh, for the needs that they have. So what you'll notice is that in a lot of job postings that you see is that most employers will expect you to have uh, a lot of knowledge with Microsoft Office tools, okay? And the reason for that is, is that uh, the combination of using Microsoft Visio, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, in some cases, Microsoft Access uh, and PowerPoint, if you learn how to master those tools, uh, you're going to have uh, all of the basics that you need to be able to actually do the work of a BA and to produce a lot of the deliverables that business analysts uh, use. The important thing is in how you actually learn to use those tools. You need to make sure that you master them and that you're using them in a way where you can produce artifacts very, very quickly. And I'll show you an example of how I actually use Visio to do this uh, in a minute. But basically, in terms of the types of tools that you want to invest in, very basic. Keep it as simple as possible unless the employer that you have, the target employer that you want to work for, is asking you to have very specific tools. Uh, so for some of the examples there would be, uh, you might see, for example, some companies will ask you to uh, have some experience with Jira or with, uh, I think there's a piece of software called uh, HP Service Center, right? These pieces of software help the companies to manage the workload. So they're more like project management software. Uh, so those types of tools, once you learn how to use one, Asana, for example, is another one that uh, I've seen companies use. But once you learn how to use that class of software, they're more or less the same. You just need to get yourself familiar with how certain types of project management software work. But those tools are not really centered around helping you produce your artifacts, right? The, the tools that help you produce your artifacts, the main one is Microsoft Visio. If I was to encourage you to learn any one tool inside out, uh, it would be Microsoft Visio. And I'll show you in a second why uh, I, I uh, talk about why I encourage people to, to learn Microsoft Visio. The second tool that I encourage uh, everyone to learn really is the, are, are the basics. Microsoft Word is critical. Okay, so if you learn how to use Microsoft Visio and Microsoft Word, you probably have a good 80% of the tools that you actually need to produce a lot of the artifacts that you're going to be expected to produce, right? Very simple. Uh, Excel would probably be the next one on the list. And then I would say SharePoint is one that a, a lot of companies use. Uh, and uh, But SharePoint's not something that you would have access to unless you actually get into uh, the office and you get your SharePoint access. That's enterprise class software that isn't normally available to, uh, to individuals. Uh, so I would say keep the tools very, very basic. Learn how to master Visio. Uh, learn how to master Microsoft Word and Excel and use those tools uh, to uh, use those very basic tools, but sharpen up your actual business analysis skills. And so uh, it's way more important in how you actually use these tools than what tools you actually use. OK, and what I mean by that is that behind me here, uh, you I have a an example of a Visio document. And this is the document that I'm actually using to produce one of our courses. Uh, so you'll see some of these diagrams uh, in future courses that we offer. But 
the important lesson here is in uh, in how I actually use this tool. So uh, in many cases, you'll see people using Microsoft Visio and having you know tabs across the bottom and having uh, basically one diagram per tab. That's not an effective way of using it. The way that I use Microsoft Visio is that uh, what I do is I create one gigantic canvas, okay? And instead of having multiple different tabs, what I do is I put all of my artifacts on one canvas. And that difference might not seem like it's a big difference, but when you're uh, in a workshop and you have a set of people sitting in front of you, many of which are very senior people whose time is very important, you want to make sure that you uh, are not being clunky with the tools that you use. And so when somebody asks you a question about a certain artifact, you can't afford right in uh, under that pressure. You have, you know, 10, 15 different eyes looking at you. You can't afford to start clicking through all of the different tabs and trying to figure out which diagram you need to show to your stakeholders uh, just to answer one question. What that That is a very ineffective way of doing things because uh, what you'll do in that workshop is you'll start to lose the attention of many of the people because they're saying, well, you know, we're sitting here uh, waiting for you to now search through stuff just to answer the one question. And we have, you know, five or ten other questions that are coming up. Doing things in this way, uh, putting everything on one canvas and then figuring out how to navigate from one diagram to another diagram in the way I'll demonstrate for you in a second, that is a huge benefit to your skill set, right? The tool is very simple, but it's in how I've taught myself how to use the tool that makes me very effective in workshops and very effective in very high pressure situations. So for example, let's say I wanted to uh, talk about a diagram that is a 2B process flow. I know exactly the way that I've oriented myself with this is I know exactly where that tool is on this gigantic canvas and I've taught myself how to actually zoom right in specifically right into that uh, diagram and to talk about this as much as I need to to be able to answer a question or to be able to handle an issue. And when somebody asks a question about a completely different element of what it is that I'm producing, all I do is instead of just clicking along the bottom to try to find uh, to try to find what I need, all I would do, let's say for example, I needed to look at the entity model that we're that we need to discuss. I would very quickly zoom out. I would go over to it and I would just put it up very quickly. Zero time wasted. Everybody's attention is still on the board and everybody's still engaged in that meeting, right? Now, if it was to take me 30 seconds and I'm basically wasting the attention of 15 different people clicking, trying to find something that I need, if I have to do that over and over and over again, that builds up over the course of an hour or a two hour meeting, that builds up and a lot of people will become frustrated and a little bit annoyed with you and you'll start to lose the engagement uh, of people. People won't be paying attention. They'll be doing other things. Their attention is going dis to dissipate. And so uh, a very simple tool, Microsoft Visio, master it. Okay, and if you need tips, if you want to learn how to do things the way that I do with Visio, I'm willing to teach you. That's not a problem. Just ask. Uh, but you have to make sure that you use your tools in a way where it's uh, it's very very effective. Keep your tool set as simple as humanly possible. Uh, when it comes to Microsoft Word, for example, again, very very simple. Uh, all I do is I have all of my scope documents, all of the uh, detail requirements and functional specification documents that I produce are usually all in Microsoft Word. Uh, and with the combination of uh, Word and Visio that I use, let me pull up our requirements document here, sample requirements document. Uh, if I was to scroll down a little bit, you'll see that much of the, the diagrams that I had produced in my Visio file now exist inside of my Word document, right? And so what I do is I do a lot of my modeling uh, and when I'm presenting to people and I'm on workshops, I usually use Visio. But when I need to put things into a document that's going to require a client sign off, I don't send them a Visio file. What I do is I write it all out in a requirements document. I paste in the diagrams that we've already all discussed and agreed to. And I send out the Word document for sign off, right? Very simple. So uh, that's how I, as a generalist VA, use uh, the tools. I would love to hear about anybody who has uh, works in a specialty environment that has specific tools that they use uh, about what their experiences are like. But as a generalist VA, I keep things as simple as possible. And what I do is I try to learn how to be as effective as humanly possible with the very simple tools that I have. So I hope that that helps to uh, answer the question. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing what other people do, uh, uh, some of other our other 
uh, intermediate to senior level analysts, I'd love to hear about what it is that you use uh, in terms of your tool sets for the work that you do. BA Blocks, the building blocks for your BA career.